today. In the early 90s, 400 people uh, lived in the city centre. Today, there are about 4,000. So a combination of the end of empire, containerization, and the collapse of industry has brought the city to the brink of total collapse. Against this background, awarding the title the Liverpool European Capital of Culture 2008 is seen as a major turning point. And today, Liverpool is a construction zone. This is a map of all the current building projects on the, in the city centre. The largest one is Liverpool One. It's a development by uh, Grosvenor um, of one billion pounds, shopping, residential and hotels, over 48, 43 acres, incorporating seven formerly public streets. Of course, at the same time, large parts of the city remain untouched. Shopping and tourist destinations dominate our visual horizon. The counter movement is largely invisible. 80% of the population in the United Arab Emirates consists of migrant workers with practically no rights. No rights, for example, in their own family. So the 75% of the migrant workers is male. Cinemas that do not exist in the time of the buy are the films. This discotheque um, aims to attract um, Indians, Karatis, Arabs, Africans, Bengali, South Indians, and Pakistanis, all in one complex of restaurants, bars, and, and clubs. And if you remember the 20th century. <laughs> Chinese couple pickers who drowned three years ago in Morecambe Bay. And the story of Boon Ding Long, the 28, was a father of two who rang his wife 5,000 miles away while drowning in Morecambe Bay. In a nutshell, there we have a different image of migration, a mobile world in which the desire for a better life crisscrosses legal, illegal boundaries, which allows the exploitation of undocumented workers 5,000 miles from their families to produce cheap food for local supermarkets. This is a film that was recently uh, circulated by the country about this story. This image of Amo, the think tank founded by Wim Kohas, shows the difference in the price of travel for a tourist and a migrant worker without paper before it was Europe. On the bottom left, you have swimmers in the Strait of Gibraltar and an African being dragged ashore by the Spanish police. On the right, one image shows a rerun of the historic Paris Beijing car race, and the other is an X ray of a truck showing refugees hidden amongst the cargo. Globalization, according to Arjun Akhaduria, is increasingly characterized by relations of disjuncture. To give some examples, media flows across national boundaries that produce images of well-being that cannot be satisfied by national standards of living and consumer capabilities. Flows of discourses of human rights that generate demands from workforce that are repressed by state violence, which is itself backed by global arms flows. Ideas about gender and modernity that circulate to create large female workforces at the same time that cross-national ideologies of culture, authenticity, and national honor put increasing pressure on various communities to morally discipline just these women who are vital to emerging market, markets and manufacturing sites. Today, more people than ever before live in places where they have not been born. I completely agree with yesterday's speaker that we have to come up with other paradigms of culture that are not attached to geopolitical boundaries. If people are on the move, why not the idea of culture itself? Looking at the emergence of biennials around the world is one way of analyzing the relationship between art and globalization. There's no doubt the rise of biennials in China, Korea, Singapore, Japan, Cuba, Peru, Senegal, are enormously important to the artists and audiences in these regions, for whom these events are often the only way to see contemporary art. 
I disagree with Sergei's view then that uh, these events are simply an extension of the Western uh, um, dominant uh, uh, the Western hegemony. Rather than homogenizing the concept of biennials into a category, I want to emphasize that the proliferation of biennials has yielded very different curatorial models that distinguished themselves notably in the relation to place and identity. Models that arise in specific time space junctures where on the one hand multipl multiplications of biennials follows the logic of globalized capital as we have seen, on the other our relation to the global has generated renewed attention to local situations, to place, to identity, to mobility, to translocal existences, a, a, a term, a concept developed by the artist Ursula Biemann, which refers to a type of mobility produced in the global era that defines, defies global political number of asylum seekers who remain in between legalities. So where biennials become interesting is when they produce a new public sphere. And this, I think, is a, an interesting example of a technical misuse, so to speak, of the brand. The emergency biennial in Chechnya is a project by Evelyn Joanno, who has asked artists to contribute work that fit in a suitcase that can be sent to Brosny, which, as you know, is pretty much completely cut off from the world. While one set of suitcases goes to Grozny, another one, identical one, travels around the world collecting artists, uh, new work for the artist. So the most significant way globalization affects us is in the way that we think about place, identity, and also belonging. This is increasingly the world of flows, of liquid modernity, of liquid fear, liquid love, and liquid life, to speak with uh, Zygmunt Bauman's latest books. In her lecture in um, Liverpool for the BBC Three Festival of Free Thinking during the last Liverpool Biennial, Doreen Massey asked, what kind of identity of place can there be for cities like Liverpool in a globalized world? And she continues to answer her own question. And what clearly doesn't work today is the romanticism of place that depends solely on the sense of the character growing somehow out of the soil. Instead, today, places are meeting places where a host of different life stories become entangled in physical proximity. Each place is a particular mix, born out of a specific history, and has to be negotiated between rich and poor, between incomer and old established residents. As a result, the local needs to look outward as well as within. We need to rethink the notion of the identity of place away from ideas about ownership and towards the recognition of responsibility, including towards the global relations and peoples upon which any place depends." End quote. Cedric Price suggested the way of seeing the city as concentrate, a place for residents and visitors alike, whose culture is dialogical, not imposed or imported. And Nicola Bourriot was trying to theorize the idea of the radicant, an idea of culture which has its roots in movement. The third idea is, um, is the hyperlink, which um, Nan Wei Xu um, suggested as a metaphor for the International Six to connect disparate places and realities. It's with these concepts that you can produ produce a new practicality in the face of the global um, tourist case, which is able to engage with a notion of place and identity without the prejudice of origin. I just want to conclude by showing you two videos of examples of how we may begin to speak with another. One is by an artist called Nino Lim. Ghost Town. And it deals with the development and gentrification of uh, gold. 